why there's still pushback from Republicans. Virginia lawmakers agree to legalize marijuana in two separate bills. What has to be worked out before it can become official. Your driving record affects your car insurance rates. The other factors that can impact how much you pay. Good morning and happy Monday to you. Make the coffee a little extra strong. You may be tired if you stayed up watching the Super Bowl last night. We thank you for waking up with us. I'm Patrick McKee with Jenna Zipton and Rachel Lucas. And the Super Bowl had a lot of things off the field going on. If you missed anything, we are breaking it all down from the commercials to the halftime show. And this morning, we do have dozens of school delays and closures. Those are scrolling at the bottom of your screen and on WSLS.com. Saw some snow yesterday, Chris. Yeah, exactly. And you know, some kids are probably like, OK, cool. Two hour delay. We watched the football game last night, so get a little bit of uh, recovery from that. Virginia Tech Skycam in Blacksburg, one of the places that saw plenty of snow once again yesterday. Things are looking pretty good on the main roads, but just watch some of those side streets. We'll go into more detail on that here in just a second. But Blacksburg and Withville, you're some of the colder spots at 17. Lewisburg at 9. Lexington, 21. Roanoke and Danville this morning. You're waking up to 25 degrees, but again, some refreeze out there, especially for those of us that did see snow melting on some of the ramps or bridges or side streets. That's now frozen with how cold we are, but most of us seeing improvements as we go through the rest of the day. A lot of snow lovers in Roanoke, you're bummed. I know the ground was just so warm yesterday morning that uh, anything that fell really didn't stick, but uh, so we see minimal issue at least in the Roanoke Valley this morning. Just cold, still in the upper 20s at 9 a.m. and then by 3 p.m. high temp temperatures right where they should be. We top out in the low to mid 40s. Help could soon be coming to families struggling across the country. House Democrats are expected to unveil a new bill that provides families as much as $3,600 per child as part of President Joe Biden's COVID relief package. If the legislation's passed by Congress, monthly installments could begin in July for one year. But despite the president's hopes for bipartisanship, some Republicans are pushing back. Even if we come in good faith with, with at least 10 and more that would have joined us, and they right. say they don't care. Uh, so you've got that. It takes two to tango. Right now, I'm not sure we have the two to tango. As the legislative efforts move forward, a bipartisan group of House lawmakers is pushing for the rapid passage of a $160 billion package that focuses on vaccine distribution. Governor Ralph Northam says he wants every school system to offer some form of in-person learning by March 15th. He says the mental health and behavioral and learning challenges exceed the risk of not returning to the classroom. Most school systems here in our area already offer in-person learning, but a few like Martinsville do not. While in-person learning is not mandatory, the governor said it needs to at least be an option. There was also an emphasis on summer learning. Most school systems have not finalized those plans. Lynchburg local health leaders and Liberty University will convert the old TJ Maxx store at Candler Station Shopping Center into a vaccine center. Officials say it's a key location because of its parking lot, access to public transportation and Route 460. The interim city manager says there's no timetable on when this site will be open because of a vaccine shortage. Don't come yet to this site uh, because we don't have it open yet. We don't have enough vaccine to sustain it. So um, when it when it is time, we will certainly publicize that and, and be ready. The site will be used for Lynchburg as well as Amherst, Appomattox, Bedford and Campbell counties. State lawmakers voted to legalize marijuana, but there's still a ways to go before it could take effect. Both the Senate and House passed bills that eliminate criminal penalties for possession of small amounts for anyone 21 or older, clears those convicted of certain marijuana-related crimes, and adds a tax on retail marijuana and products. Lawmakers in both chambers spoke for and against the bills. What's it going to do to our youth? What's it going to do to our safety, people driving on the road? What's it going to do to our workforce? What's it going to do to our health? Black Virginians are more than 3.5 times as likely to be arrested for marijuana despite using at similar rates as white Virginians. Selling legalized marijuana would not begin until 2024. If both chambers vote to pass the same version of the bill, it will head to the governor's desk.
New this morning, Virginia lawmakers are considering dueling proposals to restore voting rights for people convicted of a felony. Because the House and Senate have approved different proposals, lawmakers will have to decide how far they want to go. One resolution would automatically restore convicted felons voting rights upon their release. The other eliminates any language that removes a person's right to vote due to a felony conviction or because they've been deemed mentally incompetent. Persons heard after a stabbing in Roanoke. We don't have a lot of information right now, but police are telling us it happened yesterday on Elm Avenue near the Buds and Suds car wash. If you know anything or saw anything happen, you're asked to call police. The investigation continues after two men died and two others were seriously hurt after a shooting Friday night in Martinsville. Police say an argument inside a Mexican restaurant led to the shooting. We're told a 23 year old and 33 year old were shot and killed inside. Investigators say a third man ran from the restaurant and was chased by two men with guns. Police say a Martinsville police officer shot at the suspects and first responders found two other injured men. Police are not yet identifying the victims. State police are investigating. A person is dead after a tractor trailer crash on Interstate 81 in Roanoke County. State police say it happened yesterday afternoon near exit 138 in Salem. Two tractor trailers and two cars were involved. Police have not named any of those involved. Now this morning, before the orange barrels go up, VDOT wants your input on a big project. 10 News reporter Megan Woods joins us live with the difference they hope this project will make here in Southwest Virginia. Good morning, Megan. Good morning. So VDOT is hosting its first virtual public hearing in this part of the state tomorrow. It's to discuss widening a five mile stretch of I-81 in Salem. The $292 million project will add one lane in each direction on I-81 between exit 141 and 137. There will also be bridges replaced and modifications to some ramps. This will connect to the other widening project already under construction near that area. This is part of a $2 billion package the General Assembly passed in 2019 and is funding. Construction is expected to start later this year and will be done by 2026. This is a, a piece of 81 that has experiences uh, congestion. It has uh, about 68,000 vehicles a day use this piece of Interstate 81. There's also uh, significant delays because of crashes. And so this was an area that was uh, targeted for improvement. The virtual event is tomorrow night, 5 to 7, and you will be able to see displays and hear about any possible property impacts. Now, since this is virtual, coming up in the next 30 minutes, we tell you the multiple ways you can make sure your voice is heard and submit comments. Live in the newsroom, Megan Woods, 10 News, working for you. 608 now in what's news today. The Bedford County Board of Supervisors will mark the completion of Phase 2 of the Bedford County Internet Initiative. Zytel has installed 48 miles of fiber at four sites in the county, giving internet connection to more than 1,800 homes in Big Island, Diamond Hill, Cedar Key, and Stanton River. The $1.2 million project was partially paid for with CARES Act money. Lane closures are possible on a number of streets throughout Lynchburg starting today. For the next two months, Chantel Cruz will be installing lines. For where the work's taking place, head to WSLS.com. 608 now and Money Monday in most states you're required by law to carry car insurance. There are a lot of factors that go into your premium, often more than just your driving record. Consumer Reports requested 869 unique auto insurance quotes from nine different insurers in six states in Washington, D.C. It found that three major auto insurance companies, Geico, Progressive, and Liberty Mutual, all quoted higher average premiums to consumers who have completed less education. Geico responded saying the standards it uses are actually sound and promote healthy competition. Liberty Mutual says it looks at dozens of factors which must be permitted by state insurance regulation. Average insurance shopper has very little idea which factors companies are using to set their rates. A good thing to do is to seek multiple quotes from different insurance companies to make sure that you're not overpaying. Now, bills in some state legislatures are aiming to fix this problem. These would ban the use of education, occupation, and credit scores when quoting car insurance premiums. 
Two football players from Roanoke have a unique claim to fame. They were picked in the 2000 NFL draft before Tom Brady. Patrick Henry grad Shannon Taylor was selected with the 184th pick by the San Diego Chargers. Brady went to the Patriots 15 picks later. Taylor played quarterback at PH and linebacker at UVA. He's told us he vividly remembers the night his NFL career started. I just saw my name go across the screen and my phone blew up from family and friends. Did you see that? Did you see that? And I'm like, what? You know, and I saw Taylor at the end and um, they called me about 30 minutes later and said, we drafted you. We hope you're excited. That's incredible. William Fleming alum John St. Clair was selected with pick 94 that year. He was Taylor's teammate at UVA. 610, a local dog crowned this year's most popular. The story behind this cute marshal and how he won even more than just the title. Then new at 644, the winter blues aren't the only effects of the cold you've got to worry about. How the winter weather can also be hard on your heart. Plus, some watch the Super Bowl just to see them. That's right, we're taking a look at the most talked about commercials this morning. And this morning, temperatures starting out in the teens in Blacksburg, Martinsville at 23, Roanoke at 25 degrees, crystal clear sky overhead with a decent amount of sunshine. But believe it or not, that 25 is just the middle ground. Arctic air to the north, mild air to the south. I'll show you the three reasons why that's important with this week's forecast coming up at about 617. Your local weather authorities coverage on 10 News is about your family. Know your zone. Five specific areas so you easily spot what's coming your way. Working to watch and always track for you. Your local weather authority on 10 News. WSLS 10 News, the proud winner of the 2020 Emmy Award for Best Newscast. Super Bowl 55 has come and gone, and while Tampa Bay were the winners, was the winners on the field, which commercials won the night is a big talker, especially when advertisements are almost as big as the game. For some of us, as big as the game, because we don't really care about Larger the game. Larger than the game, <laughs> right? yeah. Chris Henson, creative director at Access, joins us for our yearly review of the Super Bowl ads. Chris, we have these broken down. We're going to start with what do you think was the funniest commercial? For me, and there were some some good, funny commercials, uh, and Saturday Night Live alumni played a big role in all these, but my favorite was Will Ferrell um, and Kenan Thompson and Aquafina in the GM EV uh, uh, ad about uh, No Way Norway, they called it, and they, they were going to meet in Norway in an hour, and it was pretty darn funny. <laughs> I mean, how can you not laugh when Will Ferrell's involved, right? That's so true. <laughs> and he punches the globe and then it's stuck on his hand for the rest of the ad. There's just little things. There's all these little details with Will Ferrell always. He's a big comedian with a lot of slapstick stuff, but he, he does, there's just all these subtle things too that are really fun. And then what about Sirius? There was one that you thought uh, won in that category. Yeah, it was deceptively simple. It was the Indeed spot. This is a, a, a job acquisition site or, you know, a get a job kind of thing. It was, uh, like we talked about in the segment before, uh, a lot of uh, different scenes, very personal, uh, uh, sing, you know, couple people, single people uh, scenes, a lot of diversity and that sort of stuff. But the text um, sort of surrounded them. So it was... Um, uh, we help and then blank and then it would be a person uh, and then it would say get a job or, or get jobs and then it would fill in the blank with different sort of like uh, new in, new people or startups and that sort of stuff uh, filling in that blank and that was just really well done the music and everything uh, just felt it just hit all the right notes yeah that me. was a great spot mm -hmm. and there were some weird ones too of course right what is with flat celebrities? I don't <laughs> see it. <laughs> uh, uh, Matthew McConaughey, of course, uh, flat in the 3D uh, Doritos ad, but then I love Jason, that one. Uh, Jason Alexander in the um, the hoodie uh, ad for Tide <laughs> was just weird. 
I will say what made it for me with this ad was the Greatest American Heroes theme song playing underneath on this one. Yeah. Bad TV show in the early 80s, but a great theme song. Oh, my yeah, gosh. exactly. Well, you know, we're talking about it this morning, so I guess it worked. Yeah. Exactly. I'm just excited about 3D Doritos. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I'm excited to do my laundry. Uh, Chris, thanks so much for joining us. Thank now you get all. some Be sleep. Safe. <laughs> All right, the final score of the game, 31 to 9, Tampa Bay winning our predictions. We uh, all got them. We got the teams right. I yep. would say score-wise, everyone was off, but I was the closest of everyone. Everyone went over. For that. Yeah. So no, um, we all lost. But yeah, you add it up and find the one I would be closest there. I will take the victory. We're all winners this morning. Sure. Your local weather authority, always watching and tracking for you from the JES Weather Center. I guess we all get a nice participation trophy for, for getting the team right, right? All right, let's go ahead and check out temperatures across the board. Look at that, 23 below zero in Bismarck, North Dakota. You got Jacksonville, Florida at 42. We're right in the middle ground, and that's important for three different reasons. I'm going to lay that out for you. Number one, that means we're kind of susceptible to temperature swings. If you think about where we are as kind of like the midfield player in soccer where they can go, both offense and defense, our temperatures can kind of go both ways as well. But precipitation tends to form on these temperature boundaries, so we'll see that as a part of the forecast Wednesday and Thursday. This also means that the forecast is going to be subject to some adjustments depending on where exactly that temperature boundary is going to be. So Wednesday, for instance, late in the afternoon into the evening, looks like areas close to I-64 will see the better chance for a wintry mix. But as we see that cold air kind of getting wedged in at the surface, Surface. While warm air rides above us on Thursday, you could actually see the chance for some freezing rain developing. Of course, we'll get into the more finite details as we go through the next few days, and we'll keep you posted on those details, not just on air, but on your local Weather Authority app. Make sure if you haven't gotten it with the past couple of uh, wintry events, that you get it for the next possible ones that come into the area. We'll send you customized forecast updates the closer we get to each storm. Rocky Mount, Roanoke 46, Martinsville 46, Alta Vista 47 this afternoon. Covington with a pair of force, Pulaski in the middle 40s as well. Clouds are going to roll in tonight. Some patches of fog and drizzle. Temperatures 30 to 35, so it'll be cool tomorrow morning, but not quite as cold as what we're waking up to right now with temperatures in the teens and in the 20s. For the Roanoke Valley, 40s today, but lower 50s after we get rid of some patches of fog and clouds tomorrow morning. Better chance of a wintry mix as of right now looks to be farther north of the Roanoke Valley Wednesday, but the possibility for some rain and freezing rain developing later in the day Thursday. Getting colder, though, as we approach Valentine's Valentine's Day. For the Lynchburg area, lower 50s tomorrow after we get rid of some of the overcast and the fog. Then by Wednesday, a few showers. Better chance of a wintry mix at the moment looks to be farther to the north, but the possibility of freezing rain sneaking in as we head into Thursday. Again, that completely dependent on the exact air temperature, so we'll keep you posted over the next few days. Time now, 620. Southside saw some snow yesterday. Let's see if that's playing a role this morning. Uh, not really. It looks like drive times are looking okay for us this morning. No reports of any accidents. Uh, this morning either 31 minutes to drive on Route 58 from Danville to Martinsville on 29 out to Vista to Lynchburg. That drive right now is taking 25 minutes. The high school ranks Radford Bobcats gearing up for their season on the gridiron. Nine and three last season that was actually riddled with injuries, but the Bobcats used the 13 months away from the field to hit the weight room. They're returning with star players like quarterback Zane Roop, but they're shaping up to be a tough battle to go against up front. News and notes, Brooks Kepka wins the Phoenix Open. Aaron Rodgers, your NFL MVP. Alex Smith, comeback player of the year, while teammate Chase Young took the defensive rookie of the year. That's your morning sports. I'm Eric Johnson. Coming up on 622, former President Trump's second impeachment trial begins tomorrow. What you need to know ahead of opening statements. Plus, another snow day in southwest Virginia. It was gorgeous. We're taking a look at some of your snow pictures. This is 10 News Virginia Today at 6, working for you. Many of us woke up to snow yesterday, and many of us, by the time we went to bed last night, it was gone. <laughs> Poof. My was. favorite kind of snow. Yeah. I love As it. always, we love showing off your photos. Fall quickly, melt quickly. Here's a pretty shot from Bill Craiger in Wythe County. It looks like the cows out enjoying the snow uh, just as much as some of the humans were. Mm-hmm. 
except the farmers. Farmers don't like having to feed the cattle in the snow. Yeah, I can mm. imagine that would yeah. not be uh, easy. Task My dad's to do. not a fan of that one, but beautiful scenery anyway. This one from Katie Mallory in Christiansburg. Aww. Now that is puppy. one that does love the snow, playing with your puppy dog. And that puppy's had a lot of opportunities to play in the snow yeah, in, no uh, in Christiansburg. Lexington, we've also had quite a few opportunities as well. Great shot here from Becky Wells, another scenic shot for you. And we've got plenty more on WSLS.com. Nice photo gallery with, once again, more than 100 pictures to choose from. We've uh, We've had quite a bit of pictures over the past couple of weeks. Yeah. We certainly yeah. have. Now we're going to melt this stuff away. Exactly. Yeah, it's cold out there this morning, though. Temperatures about uh, 8 to 18 degrees cooler than we were at this point yesterday morning. And you think about Blacksburg yesterday, you saw plenty of snow. Temperatures low to mid 30s. Well, now that you have that snow on the ground and a clear sky, your temperatures are in the teens. You're about 15 degrees lower than you were at this point yesterday. As far as south side goes, by 9 o'clock in the morning, we're up to 30 degrees by the the afternoon we saw high temperatures right where they should be in early February mid to upper 40s and then bumping up, bumping it up a little bit uh, as we head into tomorrow afternoon. We'll probably start out with some patches of light rain and a little bit of drizzle tomorrow morning in south side 50s for highs mostly dry Wednesday and then got to watch Thursday just see how much cold air is trapped up against the mountains because that could lead to the chance for some freezing rain late Thursday into early Friday morning. The push to save more lives. How a new procedure may reduce the number of surgeries kids with heart defects need. Plus, generous donations that couldn't have come at a more important time. How we're working for Special Olympics Virginia and why the cause is more important than ever. Virginia Today at 6, working for you. A historic week on Capitol Hill, what both sides are hoping as President Trump's second impeachment trial is set to begin. VDOT wants your opinion on a big project along Interstate 81, how you can make your voice heard. The winter blues aren't the only effects of the cold you have to worry about. We're working for you on how the winter weather can be also hard on your heart and what you can do to protect yourself. Good morning to you. Happy Monday. Thanks for waking up with us this morning, even if you're a little bit tired after the Super Bowl last night. I'm Rachel Lucas here this morning with Patrick McKee and Jenna Zipton. We are starting out really cold. Dozens of schools closed or delayed those scrolling at the bottom of your screen and WSLS. Com. Of course, a black ice uh, possibility this morning for some of us, Chris. Yeah, especially side streets, some bridges, some ramps, things of that nature. But there's, of course, a pretty side to the snow. And we appreciate you guys sending your pictures via pin it. This one from Dottie Walker, Brush Mountain, looking gorgeous yesterday. Then we had Christopher Holger in, in Ivanhoe, who's taken a lot of great pictures. We posted a few of those on WSLS.com. This is one of them with still the lights on. And then you go to the Roanoke Valley, where this was of course, a bummer for us, maybe an inch or so in Cave Spring, according to Ryan B. All right, temperatures real quick this morning, upper teens, lower 20s for the Highlands. We'll make our way into the upper 30s and lower 40s this afternoon, so watch out for a few slick spots this morning. We're near 50 tomorrow afternoon, but in the Highlands late Wednesday into Wednesday night, may have to watch out for a wintry mix of sorts. That potential comes back into the picture by Thursday, possibly in the form of freezing rain. All eyes are on Capitol Hill this week as former President Trump faces his second impeachment trial. He's charged with inciting an insurrection, the storming of the Capitol on January 6th. Democrats need at least 17 Republican votes to convict the president. Trump's legal team will argue his words are protected by the First Amendment, and the Senate has no power to try a former president. Never impeached a president once they're out of office. I think this is a very bad idea. Both sides are hoping for a speedy one week trial, then to get back to work on the COVID relief package as anxious Americans await their vaccines. More than 40 search and rescue members spent hours looking through dangerous conditions this week in the search of survivors from a deadly avalanche. Four people were killed in the avalanche in Mill Creek Canyon, Utah Saturday. Police say four others were able to dig themselves out and survived. All those involved are between the ages of 23 and 38 years old. The Utah Avalanche Center reports the avalanche was unintentionally triggered. 
New this morning, you may see more orange barrels and construction crews along I-81 later this year. 10 News reporter Megan Woods is working for you live with details on the public hearing to keep everyone in the loop. Yeah, well, VDOT, they are hoping to make your life just a little easier by widening I-81 in Salem between exits 137 and 141. But before they move forward, they want your input. Tomorrow night at 5, VDOT is hosting its first virtual public hearing in this region. You'll not only get to see displays on how the interstate will be widened and learn about possible property impacts, you'll also get to give your input. You can either complete the form at the bottom of the public hearing web page, email your comment. This is the, the part of the project development where it's important to hear from the community, to let them know what's going on with this project, to let them know that this major project is coming and that there is some uh, uh, additional work that will happen on Interstate 81 in our area. Comments have to be in or postmarked by February 19th. We'll have the email to send your comments to as well as the link to join the public hearing on WSLS.com later this morning. Live in the newsroom, Megan Woods, 10 News, working for you. In health headlines this morning, a new less invasive alternative to open heart surgery is changing the way doctors treat children with congenital heart defects. And they also reduce the number of surgeries these kids will need over their lifetime. Mike Lynn was born with a heart defect where her pulmonary heart valve wasn't working. She had her first open heart surgery when she was just seven days old, then a second. This time around, her doctor was able to use the minimally invasive procedure using a newly FDA approved pediatric Melody heart valve to replace the old one. It's from a neck vein of a cow and it's a natural valve and it takes about 100 to 200 of these veins to find one valve that works. The new procedure cuts recovery time from six to eight weeks to just a few days. No scar, no restrictions. Kids as young as four or five years old can have the Melody heart valve. On average, it will need to be replaced every seven years. We're coming up on 636 this morning. Now the snow total for the entire season in Blacksburg. Close to 22 inches of snow. That's the most we've seen through the first week of February since 2010. So still digging out in parts of the New River Valley where we're starting out with temperatures about 15 to 20 degrees this morning. Definitely bundle up out there. High temperatures as we head into the afternoon, however, recover really nicely. We make our way into the low to perhaps middle 40s. 636, a local dog crowned winner of this year's most popular contest. The story behind Marshall and how he won even more. Valentine's Day, it is right around the corner this weekend. We're working for you on how to celebrate love without breaking the bank. As always, a lot of the hype around the Super Bowl is always the ads, and this year did not disappoint. We asked for your favorite on the WSLS 10 Facebook page. A lot of you loved the Cheetos commercial. Garland Hogan said that was the best part of the whole game. And I think a lot of people liked that Cheetos and Dolly were, I think, in the same commercial break. Uh, it could be, yeah. 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 Uh, Karen Owens says the Alexa commercial yes. with Michael B. Jordan was her favorite. Megan would agree with this, mm -hmm. but only because Michael B. Jordan was in it. Oh, uh, yeah. That was uh, about the second most popular among the comments that we saw. That was a good one. I love that for a lot of reasons. Another popular one <laughs> was... Tell us your reasons, Rachel. <laughs> the ladies know. <laughs> I feel like that just explains oh. itself, oh, right? Oh, my Lanta. Uh, another popular one was the Jeep commercial. Randy says that one was his favorite as well. Got and Jeep lovers in there. Yep. Uh, Alyssa liked the Doritos commercial. Mm -hmm. You liked that one, Rachel, I right? Do. I do, and I'm really excited about 3D Doritos coming back. <laughs> Matthew McConaughey as Flat Matthew there. <laughs> All right, uh, 640 now. Back over to Chris with an update on your forecast. It is cold. It is a very cold one out there this morning. Temperatures right around the lower 20s in the Lynchburg area, where we actually saw a decent amount of snow yesterday. A lot of it melted. But now as we head into the afternoon and see a mostly sunny sky, temperatures right where they should be. Lynchburg at 45, Bedford and Alta Vista at about 46. This afternoon coming up, we'll show you when we see the chance for some fog and some drizzle briefly settling.
settling in. Plus, if there's any more chance of wintry weather before, in, within the next seven days, that's coming up as soon as I learn how to talk right here on Virginia <laughs> Today. It's Monday. It's all right. The winter blues aren't the only effects of the cold you have to worry about. Coming up, we're going to explain how the winter weather can also be hard on your heart. The pandemic couldn't stop us from taking the polar plunge. How our 10 News team gave back to Special Olympics Virginia. This is 10 News Virginia Today at 6, working for you. 643 now most of the country is stuck in the cold dull days of winter which can be tough on the soul but new research suggests it can also be hard on the heart 10 news anchor Brittany McGraw explains how to protect your heart in the winter. We've all heard the stories of how shoveling snow can increase your risk of a heart attack and now recent research shows that falling temperatures can contribute to higher odds of a heart attack even if you're not clearing snow. Cold weather can increase blood pressure, and although scientists aren't totally sure why, it can also raise cholesterol levels, and those are two key risk factors for a heart attack. A number of other factors can also raise your risk of heart attack, including being 65 or older, or having heart disease, diabetes, or high blood pressure. One key strategy for protecting your heart during the winter Stay warm. As you get older, your sense of how cold you are may diminish. So it's important to do things like dress in loose layers. Don't forget your hat and gloves. For men, the classic chest pain is the number one symptom of a heart attack, but not the only one. Other symptoms include nausea, vomiting, and upper body pain in the arms, back, shoulders, neck, jaw, or abdomen. While chest pain is a key symptom for women, too, other prominent signs may include overwhelming fatigue, shortness of breath, and nausea, among others. If you suspect you're having a heart attack, call 911 immediately. And don't think about driving yourself to a hospital. Trained paramedics can offer life-saving help while getting you to the hospital faster. Brittany McGraw, 10 News, working for you. Consumer Reports also says try some light physical activity to warm up, like running in place before you go outside to shovel snow. Your local weather authority, always watching and tracking for you from the JES Weather Center. And a lot of us getting good use out of the shovels here over the past couple of weeks, especially in the New River Valley. Tyler and Galax, though, saying welcome. Bring it on. We got a nice shot there for our picture of the day from Tyler in Galax, where currently temperatures are in the upper teens and lower 20s. You got Blacksburg and Withville at 17, Lewisburg at 6, very cold in the Greenbrier Valley, Lexington at 20 degrees. We're in the middle 20s at Smith Mountain Lake, Danville, and in Roanoke. So for those of us that did see snow yesterday, even if a lot of it melted, you're going to have some icy patches, especially on side streets, uh, bridges, ramps, things of that nature. Most main roads are just fine this morning. Areas in the green there for midday and into the afternoon by this afternoon, mostly sunny temperatures where they should be a lot of us in the low to mid 40s by tonight. We see more clouds coming in some fog settling into parts of the region, so temperatures won't drop quite as low. We'll be around 30 to 35, so we start out with fog tomorrow, maybe some patches of drizzle, but we're mild by the afternoon with high temperatures in the 50s. You notice high pressure that's taking care of us today. Sinking air means more sunshine, but the clockwise wind around high pressure pressure that is going to put some uh, stable or kind of a shallow layer of uh, clouds in the area as we head into tomorrow morning. The west wind then takes over tomorrow afternoon, keeping us mild. Now let's head toward the middle of the week and we're going to be separated from Arctic air to the north and mild air to the south. So that puts us kind of in a vulnerable position to where we could see a wintry mix develop late Wednesday, especially as you go near into the north of I-64. So that's weather maker number one. Weather maker number two would come in Thursday. Thursday into Thursday night. And if we have enough cold air trapped against the mountains, 
You could be looking at some spots of freezing rain. So keep checking back for updates on the forecast. We'll provide those for you frequently on social media. There's my Facebook page, Chris Michaels, WSLS 10 News, Twitter and Instagram at WSLS underscore Michaels. Your extended forecast for the New River Valley, though, showing temperatures kind of ping pong in a little bit throughout the week. Lower 40s today, but near 50 tomorrow after we get rid of the overcast in the morning. We're cooler by Wednesday and definitely by Thursday, though I think most precipitation Wednesday will be north of you. So it's not until Thursday that we see some rain and perhaps some freezing rain developing before a cold Valentine's Day weekend. High temperatures as of right now in the 30s for the Roanoke Valley 40s today, 50s tomorrow, 40s on Wednesday and then 30s for highs on Thursdays. We track the chance for some freezing rain that wrapping up early Friday morning with perhaps another system to track near the coast as we head into Saturday cold and at least mostly dry for right now as we look ahead toward Valentine's Day. Time now 648. Let's get a check of uh, drive times on the interstate. Yeah, 81 looking really good. Christiansburg to Roanoke right on time at 32 minutes. Lexington to Roanoke also on time at 43 minutes. Remember, watch out for black ice. Anything that looks wet is probably frozen. Love doesn't cost a thing or shouldn't, but as Valentine's Day comes this weekend, the pressure to purchase something increases. However, experts say responsible spending tops the list on what people are looking for in a partner. They suggest a budget friendly gourmet meal you can buy for takeout. If food, flowers and candy aren't your thing, though, how about the promise of adventure? Surprise vacation company Pack Up and Go says being a tourist in your own town is a great way to celebrate. Or a new neighborhood or, you know, get takeout from a new restaurant or, you know, force yourself out of your your day to day comfort zone, even in your hometown. I love doing this. We love going and seeing places that we, you know, we talk about, but we haven't ever been to. Whatever you do, remember being together is a gift too. Although Rachel, after the past year, maybe you want some time apart. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it takes, right? Whatever it takes. Before the Super Bowl crowned a champion, a local dog won a championship of his own. That's right, eight-month-old Boston Terrier Marshall from Salem won most popular in the Puppy Bowls online contest. We've talked a lot about Marshall, and he also won MVP of the Puppy Bowl. He's officially a superstar. He was adopted by the Salem couple behind Deaf Dogs Rock. Marshall is fully deaf and is helping raise awareness about just how wonderful deaf dogs can be as pets. Because of Marshall's victory, his rescue organization, Green Dogs Unleashed, gets a cash prize. We are so excited about this. Yeah. He just stole everybody's heart. Yes, and he many did. of you voted for him, mm -hmm. so you made it happen. It's cold outside, but our Polar Plunge team was freezing for a reason indoors this weekend. 10 News took part in the Polar Plunge, and we wrapped up another successful event to benefit Special Olympics Virginia. The full event couldn't happen in person, of course, because of the pandemic, so more than 200 teens from all across Virginia found their way on their own to make this happen safely. It's worked out really well that people could just plunge wherever they're at. So um, it's, it's gotten some new people on board and we're really, really pleased that we have exceeded our goal this year of over $700,000. This year's Polar Plunge raised more than 778,000. We want to thank you for supporting our team as well. We <laughs> surpassed our goal, raising more than $6,600. We, uh, the morning team, did our plunge last week in the snow. Mm -hmm. We didn't yep. get to do a, a slightly warmer water dive. That's, that's okay. Right. I got to wear clothes and didn't have to get wet. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, no, that's right fine with me. <laughs> It is 6.51 this morning. Five things you need to know are next. Stay with us. It is 6.55. Here's a look at five things you need to know. Democrats start laying out what COVID relief will look like this week. Democrats are planning to add new monthly child payments up to $3,600 paid monthly starting in July. Republicans argue the $1.9 trillion plan costs too much. Former President Trump faces his second impeachment trial starting tomorrow. He's charged with inciting an insurrection, the storming of the Capitol on January 6th. 
Democrats need at least 17 Republican votes to convict the former president. Trump's legal team will argue his words are protected by the First Amendment and the Senate has no power to try a former president. Governor Northam says he wants every school system in Virginia to offer some form of in-person learning by March 15th. Some have been virtual all year. While in-person learning is not mandatory, the governor said it needs to at least be an option. There was also emphasis on summer learning. Most school systems have not finalized those plans. He's, yeah. he's not bad. <laughs> hey, well, you know, we don't want two of those. Um, anyways, uh, so sunny today with temperatures in the 40s. Our weather looking pretty good. Fog and drizzle settles in early Tuesday morning. A couple midweek chances for precipitation. The one on Wednesday into Wednesday night looks to be near into the north of I-64, but turning colder just in time for Valentine's Day. By Thursday, got to see just how much cold air is at the surface because that could mean the chance for some freezing rain in parts of the area heading into early Friday morning. Friday afternoon is looking dry. If, if you're looking for any semblance of warmth, that comes tomorrow afternoon with highs 50 to 55. Coming up next on today, what you need to know about paying taxes in the middle of this pandemic. As we leave you this morning, we will give you a live look Ooh. from the Roanoke Blacksburg Regional Airport. A beautiful sunrise as we start off on this Monday morning. Thanks so much for joining us. Have a great day.